This type of data is usually stored in the OLTP data from the predefined layer or predefined level. We have all the kinds of data, but we have some data which are abnormal. At the age of 65, you have the income of 300 or uh, 400 rupees. Only limited set of values with no meaningful order. Students, welcome to the next session of the Big Data Analytics, Cloud Computing and Big Data Analytics. Let's start this session with the last unit topics, that is the fourth unit topics. Let's start this session with introduction to the necessity of pre-processing. As we know, data are the key ingredients for any analytical processing. It is important to consider and list the data sources that are needed for the collection of the data. The real life data that we usually collect will not be entirely clean and only necessary data are collected. We have collected all the data which contain so many garbages like the inconsistencies, incompleteness, duplication and merging of the problems. What we have to do is before uh, playing an analytical algorithm, you have to process them. You have to clean and remove all the dirty elements that are present in the data. Okay. Throughout the analytical modeling steps, various data filtering mechanisms needs to be applied to clean up and reduce the data size to a manageable and usable size, that is the relevant size must be there for applying the analytical processing. It is of the utmost importance that every data before the analytical algorithm is applied must be justified. Every data must be justified. That means you have collected the correct data. It must be carried out. We have to transform them, validate them and document them before applying the analysis algorithms. Okay, Even the slightest mistake, small mistake in cleaning up the data or getting only the relevant data, if you make mistake in that, all the analysis procedure may give you wrong information or wrong analysis result. So, you have to take care of the processing or pre-processing of the big data. Okay. The thing is, the transaction are the first important source of data. Whenever you are collecting the data, the transaction are the most important type of data. The transactional data consists of the structured, the st transactional data usually consists structured low level, that is the low level, detailed information. You need to have the detailed information capturing the key characteristics. You need to capture the key characteristics of the customer transaction. Example, if you take the purchase of a customer, the claim, if you had applied for any claim, any, any discounts, that must be saved. Cash transfer, whether it was a cash transaction or a car transaction, whatever it is, credit card, payment, every detail of the key characteristic of a customer transaction must be stored, which is of a structured format. Okay, This type of data is usually stored in the OLTP. It is an online transaction processing relational databases. These are the OLTP are the formats which stores all these informations. Like if you shop in Amazon, what you will give is sometime if it is cash transaction, there is no need to store uh, much of the details. If it is a card transaction, credit card or debit card transaction, it has to store the details of the purchase, the details of the credit card, debit card like card number, validity, card holder name, CVV, everything will be stored in the online 
transaction processing database which stores all the details of your card okay the plenty of publicly available data can also be included in the analytical exercise like what are the interest in what you are interested if you are if you have shared that in the social media it can also be included in the analysis like which is publicly available what you are eating what is your eating habits what in in what you are interested whether it is political sports environment all these interest you would have listed out in the facebook and you have uh, kept the protection as only for friends you think that only friends can view it but anyone from the facebook can view the data that you have stored and can use this data for analytical exercise okay the thing is the aim of sampling what you need to do in a pre processing is first thing is sampling you have to make the sampling enabled for a big data okay the aim of sampling is to take a subset of past customer you are going to take the sample you know about the sample isn't it it is not the entire product it is just a small amount of the product which gives you the insight of how the product is isn't it which is called as the sample okay same thing is done here why do we need sampling is to take the subset of the past customer data which is already stored and use that to build an analytical model you have you can analyze a customer by looking at the subset of past data that has been stored for a customer okay the first question is the need for the sampling why do you need sampling with the ability of high performance computing facilities like we have the grid and the cloud computing where everything will be online one could also directly analyze the full data set full data set will be available in the cloud or in the grid computing which enables you to take the past history of a customer data the sample should also be taken from an average business period from within the 2 months how much he has transacted whether he has taken a new material or a new product so it can be taken from average business period to get a picture of the target population that is as accurate as possible so you can take the average business period in this 2 months what does the younger generation has concentrated what was their interest of uh, business or what was their interest to buy in our shopping site so this can be obtained to get a target population so they can sell if a earphone or headphone is more widely purchased or used by most of the younger generation they come to the conclusion that they analyze that the young generation is up to having the electronic gadgets so they can concentrate more on having a stock of the electronic gadgets for younger generation okay they can have the target population to reach out for their product okay the sampling bias should be avoided as much as possible sampling must be taken without any bias that means an average sampling must be taken to know that sampling is having only the relevant data not the irrelevant data so we have a sampling method called as stratified sampling that is strata means arranged in the form of the layers data are arranged in the form of the layers top layer middle layer lower layer so in stratified sampling a sample is taken or according to the predefined strata what from what which layer you have to take the data whether it is only the creamy layer whether the middle type of data or the inner details of the data must be taken consider for example a churn prediction or the fraud detection context in which data sets are 
typically very complex. What kind of data you can take is 99% non-frauds and 1% are fraud. When you have a social media, there will be 99% which are not frauds, which are the authenticated IDs and we have 1% churners. Churners is nothing but who are fake not real. So you have to detect the fraud taking the sample layer of data are there. You have to take the sample sampling by considering only one percentage for fraud detection. You have to consider only the uh, uh, creamy layer like what is his profile picture, what is his qualification, all these things if you look at. It is the creamy layer. By looking at that you can have a sample of whether it is a fake profile or a real profile. So you have to get a stratified sampling data from the predefined layer or predefined level. When stratifying, when making a layer according to the target churn indicator indicating that this is a fake one, the sample will contain exactly the same percentage of the churners or the fake and not churners as in the original data. The sample will take same ratio of the real and the fake. Next, we shall move on to the types of data elements. What type of data elements you can consider for pre-processing? It is important to consider the different types of data elements at the starting of the analysis, you have to consider different types of data elements. There are different types of uh, data elements that can be considered. That is one is continuous. So these are the data elements. These are the data elements that are defined on an interval, that are defined as an interval that can be limited or unlimited. So we have the data elements that are collected at an interval that may be limited or unlimited in number. Example in quotes, the income, the sales, the recency, frequency and monetary details. They are collected in interval. Okay, They may be limited or unlimited, but they are continuous. They do not break even though there is a time gap, but they are considered as continuous. Then we have a type known as categorical, okay. You can categorize the data as nominal, okay. Nominal are the data elements that can only take a limited set of values. It can take only limited set of values with no meaningful ordering. There will be no order, just only collection of the data is there. Examples are like uh, marital status, profession purpose of the loan, these are not all in order, but there is no relationship between each other, but they are needed, which is called as the nominal, okay. Then we have the ordinal type of data. These are the data elements that can only take on a limited set of values, only small set of values with a meaningful ordering. There will be a meaningful ordering in between. Example is the credit rating, age coded as young, middle, young generation, the middle generation and the retired one like that, okay, senior citizen like that, middle aged and old. You can include limited set of values but have an ordering in the category of elements, okay. Then we have the binary elements where you can take only two conditions. These are the data elements that can only take on two values like the gender, male or female like that, employment status, employed or not, marital status, married or not like that. So these are the binary values. We have the nominal, ordinal and the binary type of data elements. Okay. Next, after taking the sampling with various data elements, 
Now, there will be some values which may be missing, which are not present and are important for the analysis of the big data. Now, the next thing is to know the processing of the missing values. Okay, the missing values can occur, it is possible because of various reasons. You can have a missing value. The information can be non-applicable. The collection team may think that this data is not applicable, not needed. So they may omit this, that data. In such a case, it will become a missing value. The information can also be undisclosed. Some may be, some may uh, breach the privacy of an individual. So you can't use that. At that case also, there will be a missing value. For example, a customer decided not to disclose his or her income because of the privacy or the birth date or birth year for maintaining the privacy. The missing data can also originate because of an error during merging of the different kinds of data. Example is typing mistakes in name or ID, which are the errors that can happen over, that can happen during the collection or sampling of the data. All right. There are some analytical techniques like uh, decision trees, which can directly deal with the missing values, that deals with the missing values. Other techniques need some additional pre-processing. You have to do some pre-processing before collecting the missing value. But some analytical techniques can efficiently deal with the missing values. They can't collect the missing values, but they have to somehow deal with the missing values. How they are going to deal with the missing values? The following are the most popular schemes to deal with the missing values. What are they? First is the replacing, okay, or imputing. Replacing or imputing. So replacing implies that replacing the missing value is the only thing which can do the or which can rectify the error. How do you replace the value is? An unknown value is replaced by a known value. Okay, you are going to replace the missing values like age. If age is not there, you may put a known value based on the interest, based on other conditions. You may predict the age and you can fill the missing value. Okay, other than that, you can delete. If you think that you cannot replace the value that is missing, then you can straight away delete. What you are going to delete? This is the most straightforward option and consists of deleting the observations, deleting the entire row of data or variables with lots of missing values where there is no uh, continuous values or there are more number of missing values than the average that kind of data will straight away be deleted from the big data data center. Okay, this action assumes that information is missing at random and has no meaningful interpretation. With, without that value, you can't interpret a data and or relationship to the target. There is no relationship with a target processing and you can't analyze the data with a missing value. In such a case, you can directly delete the values, okay? Another thing is keeping it. Another method of dealing the missing values is keeping it. Missing values can be meaningful. It may have missed some of the values. Example, customer did not disclose his or her income because he is currently unemployed. Because of this unemployment status, he is not disclosing the value. Okay. In such a case, this is clearly related to the target 
and needs to be considered as a separate category. There is not mandatory that he has to give the value for that. The analytical algorithm can skip that value even though it is important but it is not critically important that you need, you must need that value or you must have that value. You can, without that value also, you can handle the data or you can analyze the data. In such a case, you can keep those values, missing values as it is without doing anything. Now, next thing is the outlier detection and treatment. What is this outlier? We have all the kinds of data. But we have some data which are abnormal, which, which are like odd man out, which doesn't belong to any of the group of data or any kind of data. What we have to do with that kind of data? That is the concept we are going to discuss in the outlier detection. So first, first step is detecting which is the data which doesn't belong to a category. Okay. So, outliers are extreme observations that are dissimilar to the rest of the population. When compared to other data, this data is totally different. It cannot be included in the pre-processing or it cannot be included in the analysis. So, that kind of data are called as the outliers which are outside the group, which cannot be added like odd man out. Okay, so actually there are two types of outliers that can be considered as a category of outliers. One is the valid observation. Where what is a valid observation? Example, it is salary of a boss is one million dollar, which is not an usual one, isn't it? Another one is it is valid, but is not a normal one, isn't it? Another is invalid observation. It is the age is 300 years or age is 150 years or the age is below zero or negative values. These are the invalid observations, isn't it? Which doesn't belong to any group and you cannot use it for analysis. Okay. The both are univariate outliers. Both are abnormal data in the sense that they are outlying on one dimension. They don't fall into a category. Okay. However, the outliers can be hidden. You can hide the outliers in unidimensional views of the data. If you just view by with a one database view of a table or one dimension or column or row wise, you can hide those valid or invalid observations or the outliers. Okay, the multivariate outliers which have multidimensional from view of the multivariation row wise and column wise if you take, if you have multivariate outliers, these are the observations that are outlying in multiple dimensions. They do not belong to a category, but you can't even hide it in the row wise or column wise. You can't hide it anyhow. So, what can we do with these kinds of outliers? What must we, we should do for that kind of data which are the, which does not belong to it or belong to any category? One thing is you can just ignore the data. If it is not a consistent data, if it is not a critical data, you can ignore them. If it is Affecting the analysis process, analytical process, you can hide it in univariate outliers. That is one dimensional outliers. If it is two dimensional, you have to take the procedure to deal with the outliers. So the thing is, you have to detect and treat the outliers. This is the, we have an example for this. There is a diagram which gives an example of two outlying observations which are outside the category considering both the dimensions of income and age. Now here we have the example where in the X column we have the different age then 
in the column we have the income we can observe that there are points which relate to the age as well as the income so we have points like at the age of 18 or 16 you have an income of 600 rupees or 600 dollars you say or at the age of 20 you have an income of 1000 rupees then at the age of 23 or 25 say 23 the income is 1500 dollars or you say 15000 rupees or at the age of 30 your income is same at the age you reach 40 your age the income may have become 20000 or 2000 it may have increased by 21000 at the age of 42 at the age of uh, 47 your income would have become 23000 and at the age of 50 your income may have become 25000 let's say or 2500 dollars at the age of 58 your income may have become 3200 or 3300 dollars at the age of 65 your income may have become the 4000 dollars these are all the datas that fall into a normal category okay then we have two outliers which does not belong and which are not the normal category of data we have one observation here where it says that at the age of 20 you have 4000 income which is not a normal one okay so this is the abnormal data or outlier which doesn't belongs to any category another outlier is there where at the age of 65 you have the income of 300 or uh, 400 rupees again it is also a outlier which belongs which doesn't belongs to this category okay so in the next session we shall see what are the methods that we can take to detect an outlier and how to treat these outliers what must be done with these outlier datas before applying the analytical processing to the big data all right thank you